I make cheese in a traditional way with raw milk and its own indigenous microorganisms. Uh, I do not uh, use uh, commercial starter cultures. Uh, I do not use uh, genetically modified rennets, but rather I make cheese in a, a more natural way that also makes cheese much more flavorful. Now, um, I used to be a, 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 an organic farmer and a small scale cheese maker. But since I, I wrote my book about uh, natural cheese making, I've decided to devote myself entirely towards teaching cheese. And uh, in the two years since the book has been published, I've traveled extensively uh, teaching workshops on traditional cheese making across North America, uh, in Europe, uh, in uh, Latin America, and uh, Australia as well. So I started cheese making about 10 years ago. And I started because I met a cheese maker who was making cheese at home. And she was keeping goats um, and uh, working with her raw milk and making some amazing wheels uh, of, uh, of aged blue cheese. And I, I couldn't believe that she had made cheese so flavorful at home. And I thought, well, I can do this. And uh, at the time, I was uh, apprenticing to be a farmer. I was learning about organic agriculture. And when I started making my cheese, uh, I decided I was going to make my cheese in a more traditional, natural way, the same way I was learning how to farm. And so uh, the first cheese I ever made, I, I added to it my kefir culture that I was keeping because it seemed like the most natural, most intuitive thing to do. Uh, my kefir culture was full of beneficial microorganisms, uh, which I presumed would be good for cheese making. And so I added the kefir culture to my milk and the milk turned into a, a, a beautifully flavored cheese. And I, I didn't realize it at the time, I didn't really understand why what I was doing was significant. But it took me many years of experimenting and playing around with raw milk and with kefir culture to come to the understanding uh, of cheese that, I, that I'm at today. Did you, did you, uh, did you do uh, research about it? I didn't, uh, I, I didn't do an apprenticeship. I didn't go to, to school to learn how to make cheese, but rather I taught myself how to do it. And uh, I spent many years at home experimenting in my kitchen with my raw goat's milk, with my kefir culture, uh, making a lot of different styles of cheese, making a lot of big mistakes. Um, a lot of kinds of kefir too? Um, there's only really one kind, there's only the kefir grains, uh, but I'll talk about them later. Um, this um, traditional cheese making that I practice isn't very commonly practiced. Um, when I started learning, um, when I started teaching myself how to do it, um, I, I, let, let, actually let me start that again. I, when I started cheese making, I wanted to do things traditionally, but I couldn't really find anybody to show me how. I couldn't find any cheese makers in North America who are making cheese in a traditional way. Um, I couldn't find any books that told me how to make cheese without having to pasteurize my milk and adding freeze-dried starter cultures. I considered coming to Europe to learn how to make cheese, but it was really far from home and I was really focused on my farming and upon my community and I didn't really want to leave. And I wasn't even sure if in Europe I could find cheesemakers who were making cheese without added starter cultures. Um, in Europe, most artisanal cheesemakers are using the same freeze-dried starter cultures that cheesemakers in North America and South America are using today. And so I realized if I was going to learn how to make cheese traditionally, naturally, I was going to have to teach myself how to do it. And so I spent years experimenting in my kitchen with, uh, with raw milk and with kefir, slowly but surely teaching myself how to transform milk into cheese without uh, the modern industrial ingredients. The most important advice I'd give to a cheesemaker uh, is to seek out good milk. Milk is the foundation of cheese. Um, the quality of the cheese greatly reflects upon the quality of the milk that made it. And if you don't choose good milk in your cheese making, if you simply go to the store and buy your average supermarket pasteurized, homogenized milk, that milk will not turn into cheese. The milk's nature has been taken away from it because of its processing. If you want to make good cheese, it's very important to seek out good milk, preferably raw milk, straight from the udder and still warm. Such milk is in its best state for cheese making and responds best to the cheese making process and makes the best tasting cheese too.